back over here at the duck club see if we can't catch this problematic beaver for you and uh, it's, I like this little facility they got for hanging out along the river cooking and I'm gonna get over here and look go over and look around the old sweet that Tupelo gum tree see where they got it dammed up again but uh, I'm gonna find him. I th if he's in there, they, they back. I don't know where they hiding now. They back. I'll find him. Uh, I'm gonna get over there and start looking. So y'all like? I'm coming back in over here for the uh, duck club in the Ironwood Bluff area. So just. Uh, See if I can help them remove their problem beaver that's damming up the canals again. Whew. It takes years to develop the kind of relationship that gets me phone calls. I had somebody ask me about how do you get the land to uh, trap. That takes years. You got to Develop your relationships with your landowners. Develop your reputation. Uh, be willing to work with them when they call you. And by word of mouth alone, it gets you more phone calls than anything. So I'm going to look and see if we can't find some sign. Try to eliminate this beaver if I can. And uh, yeah, it's just good to work with all these landowners. And uh, yeah word of mouth to get you more phone calls to remove beaver stuff like that it's hard here to get permission to trap dry land because mississippi is still a deer dog running state but for your beaver trapping they're glad to get them gone so <laughs> that's what i'm doing we'll see if we find any good signs well this is one of the spots where they keep having to re-break the dam I'm seeing a few fresh chew sticks here and there. I don't know if the beaver just give up trying to fix the dam here or what. I mean, that fresh chew stick right there is last night or whatever. But I am going to put in a few sets here. I plan on uh, right here. I do have a channel where the things in the water have been traveling up through there. I do plan on putting a leg hold there since we've had this frost got all these leaves dropping like that leaf going down through there right now if i was to put a 330 in it it's just going to get choked with leaves that won't be the best option but right in here for a leg hold trap i think is the best bet put a little caster in here to slow them down get them curious get them smelling get them back and forth across the trap i'll take a look at it when i get it set the first set I put in is about knee deep water out here where it's going to be a drowning hole. They're going to blow a hole. And right here on the bottom all the way up to that location where they're going to have to come fix it or something. But uh, right there at that dam break, if I can get the canoe to behave, right there, boat. Right there in that dam break in that clear water, right under that paddle, you can see a TS-85 bedded on the bottom. If they come up in here trying to fix that hole or trying to go through that gap, otter, beaver, either one, they're going to have to come across that. I'm going to set each one of these individual little holes that they've got. I've got another one right here. Kind of looks like a crossover. There's going to be a trap baited right there as well. But the uh, right there is a good looking spot. Between that one, this one, I'll see if I can't find another one. But anything tries to travel through this dam or trying to come over here, going traveling, trying to plug up the canals, should find one of these leg holes but right here. It's a great spot. You can see the silt's all washed out of it. Maybe a crossover. It may just be where the water's going, but there'll be a trap going there. 
right here at this little place where the uh, the current was flowing through a hole in the dam I have a no BS Beaver Extreme bedded in it if they come up here to fix the dams or just traveling through they're gonna hit these little gaps it's easier for them, easier for them to cross and there'll be a surprise waiting for them right here but I'm gonna get it out and as deep a water as I can get to right over here and get it anchored off. Now I was able to find deep enough water here. I pulled out a 14 and a half, 15 foot cable, stuck the deep water anchor out here, pulled the cable tight, run it out here into this deeper hole, and it runs all the way up there to that uh, little cut through channel that I just found and set that no BS Beaver Extreme in. Now, I'm gonna continue looking around, see if I can find any more crossovers for a sign. They said these beaver, maybe every other day they'll come in and fix the dam, but uh, they want them gone. Cause like I say, they got a 10 inch pipe and a tractor pulling a PTO driven water pump, filling these canals for their duck hunts. And the beavers got other ideas, so. <laughs> We'll see if we can't catch him. Now, this beaver's active in here. Uh, you can see right here at these cypress knees, the uh, a beaver's teeth are constantly growing. Constantly. So, a lot of times they'll get in here on these cypress knees, like they're chewing on this cypress knee and they're chewing on these other cypress knees. They're just doing this to wear their teeth down, they're not doing it for food. And cypress is hard enough that it's grinding on their teeth for them. So I like, you know, a lot of these cypress knees are going to be chewed on. It can't taste good. I mean, it's not edible. It's, <laughs> they're just doing it to wear their teeth. There's wood chips all over the place. Wood chips all over this one. Uh, I see a fresh cut stick right up here. and saw another fresh cut stick behind me. They're in here eating and wearing their teeth down. All the tops of these cypress knees have been chewed on over the years, but these, these are, are freshly done. Cause I mean, there's still wood chips all over around them. And uh, I'm gonna keep moving, see what kind of good sign I can find, but this one's actively chewing on the cypress knees. There's a good look at a, what a beaver den looks like underwater. I mean, that one was back during higher water than what it is now, cause the water level is usually way up here but that's the entrance to a beaver lodge it's just going to be a hole in the roots that goes on up into the bank that one i'd like to find something like that out in the woods it'd be a perfect cubby for like cats but i'm not seeing i'm not fresh i'm not seeing fresh sign going in and out of it but it was back during the higher water there's the uh, entrance to a beaver lodge bank den lodge same thing it's just one's made out of sticks and one's built under the roots and i'll keep moving putting in a caster mound right here i've got a creek run coming through here i'm finding some fresh chew sticks finding fresh chew sticks out in it it's just a little cypress slough and all this flooded cypress timber and hardwood timber and tupelo gums and other trees back in here they're flooding them for their mallard hunts. I mean, it creates great pockets where mallards can just drop in into this flooded timber for the duck hunting club. And they, <laughs> they're trying to control the water, not the ducks. But uh, I pulled up a bunch of mud and twigs and there's a TS-85. I'm going to be bedding right here where I excavated all the dirt on my cable drowner i'm gonna run it down in deep water and anchor it off here in a minute when i set the trap back where i excavated all the mud i used a few sticks for fencing to put them in my bullseye <clears throat> if this beaver gets wind of this he's going home with me but uh i'll get that set finished and uh, keep moving good strong caster lure that Alpha Delta Castor Lure, same stuff for sale. This works everywhere. I truly expect to catch here tomorrow. Well, I've had some questions about my deep water anchor in. It's just a five eight, five, you know, five foot long piece of this EMT tubing. 
And over the years, beaver beat them up, bend them, everything else pretty good. I kind of squashed the ends of them, whopping on them with a hammer. But it's just a double barrel, double barrel and a single stop used as a cinch. And once you, once you cinch it up on that pipe, it ain't on that tubing. It's not moving. I've had beaver pull them out and uh, it's just walking up around on the bank with like a drag. They ain't gonna pull the deep water or the shallow water anchor at Bigfoot mud anchor. Then they're just on a 14 foot leash. But uh, I'll drag it out in deep as water as I can get to, beat it down into the ground, get the cable tight, and hopefully have a beaver here tomorrow. Well, right here, just down from the caster mound I just made, I found this one, and this is what the beaver did himself. You can tell it's still muddy where they drug that up here. And he's been up here chewing on the cypress tree right here. So they're chewing on the cypress. They're, in, they're chewing on this cypress right here. Don't look very tall. Probably a little two-year-old beaver. Just trying to reclaim probably where he was born or <laughs> where the colony was where he first came from. Since I, I pulled four or five out of here the first time I was in here. And this one just happened to move back in. So... That's what their little caster mounds look like. You can tell that water's still muddy. That was done last night. I can see footprints in it. I did make a caster mound myself right there. And anything traveling up this cut's gonna hit this. If I don't find any more sign past this, I'm gonna come back and put a trap on their mound. Just give them something, you know, to tick them off. But that, that one will get visited again frequently. That's the beaver marking their territory. Got these fresh chews right here, floating. Right here close to this. I caught some beaver in last time in a 330 underneath that bank lodge. It comes out right here underneath this root. I think I'm gonna have to reset this one again. This one appears to be this one appears to be silted. I mean, you can see the silt I'm stirring up with just a paddle. There's not a lot of activity in that one. If anything, I would think it right here is these chews. I'm thinking it's going to be in that den right there. I caught them in here last time. So I'm going to poke a 330 in that, that den run right there and hopefully catch another one tonight. But uh, I figure it's just a two-year-old in here setting up again. But we'll find out. I'm going to put a 330 right there just because of these fresh cues that are floating all around this location. I mean, it's like a vacant apartment. I took the beaver out here before, and they just set up again in the same place. So with this one being silted that I can see with the boat paddle, and this one is going to be a hard bottom run, that one's where I'm going. Right there, I have a 330 on an 8 stand. Shoved in there about as tight as I can get it to that root wad with that uh, run. You can see that run right here. Runs right up through there. It goes underneath those roots. Up into that vertical bank where they've got a den. Let that one hunt. I mean, no lure, no nothing, just blind. Just set it in the trail and come back tomorrow and see if you've caught something. But uh, I'm just looking, see what else I can find. Yep, I'm getting closer. I'm finding more chew sticks floating all down through here. This is where they're spending some time. And uh, looks like they've even built a caster mound out here on a log. Now I see this from time to time. Got a bunch of leaves and mud and everything pulled up on the log itself. Interesting. I've seen them do it before. I'm up here getting pretty close to the source of where they're pumping the water in. There's a good bit of water coming. You know, hopefully you can see the bubbles floating down through there. And a riffle. They got a 10 inch pipe flooding from the river into these Hopefully you can see the riffles going over the leaves. This is uh, where they're flooding the canal back here. And uh, this 
anytime you got this much moving water, you got two bodies of water close together. There's got to be a crossover somewhere. I'm gonna have to get out and wait around up here just a minute and see if I can find it. And get it set for either otter or beaver because everything's gonna use this with this much water running. But there's a lot of water flowing through here. Got beaver and I know I've always seen otter in here too, so I gotta get out and look. Found a good looking little riffle. I don't know whether it's an old beaver dam or what. I don't see mud and sticks and, and look at that. <laughs> Everything is choked down right here. Right here. Holy cow. If I can get a 330 to go in there and uh, hopefully it won't get plugged up with sticks. Every otter, every beaver, <sighs> everything's got to come through there. Coming and going. I think I've got to do that. That looks like one of them places I have to sit. We'll find out in a minute. I have taken a 330 on an H stand right there. Kind of fenced it off a little bit. And everything coming through this creek <laughs> from where they're pumping up here has to come through here. And right there's a 330. Hopefully I kind of bent the trigger wires backwards so any leaf debris will just wash on through. But anything trying to charge through it's going to get caught. It's a, a true 10 by 10. Whew, I think it's a Fox Creek Outdoors or something. 10 by 10, 330. Zero gap. So, and it's fast. <laughs> so if I get an otter to blow through here, hopefully it'll get caught. But uh, I use this stick as fencing. And I tuck the springs between the cypress tree right there to hold it. I tuck the springs between the cypress tree right there in the groove to help support it, stiffen it, and got the H stand cabled over here to my metal tubing. And oh, this looks sweet. That, if it don't get plugged up with leaves, that should work. Now here's another old high water bank lodge. You can see the holes there's a little there's a big one coming out right here under those roots so during the high water when they're in here uh denned up there's a hole there's a smaller hole right here multiple holes for them to come out of and i'm finding a good many chew sticks up in here but uh, i'm not finding any runs that says yeah they done dug <laughs> they done dug a new hole but uh these old bank dens sure give you a lot of insight into what they look like normally i just find the runs but seeing them out of the water during low water conditions you can see how they're made how they tunnel up under stuff it's just interesting don't see it don't get an opportunity to see it a lot so I've been tempted one of these days to crawl up in there and see if I can't look in one. But I'm afraid I'd find a skunk or something else living in it. But uh, I'll keep moving. I, saw, I chose to sit a 330 on an H stand in this run too. I mean, if you've got one den blocked, you might as well block the other entrance. I'm going to find me a dive stick to put up here. Make them dive under that and duck into that 330 hopefully but uh there's some action going on around here at night a lot of chew sticks the uh, they're pumping water in and the beaver down here is trying to dam it up as fast as they're pumping it so let me find a dive stick to lay across this this is what i've done i've taken a dive stick kind of put it up on the back side of my 330 stand did throw in a little caster lure back behind it just to get their attention and if they want to come in and check it out they're gonna to have to duck and dive underneath that stick 
which should put them right in that Duke 330 right there. And uh, hey, something's gonna get caught. Don't know what, don't know how many, but something's gonna get caught. <laughs> we'll, I'm gonna keep moving around, see whatever, what other places I can get sets put in. I'll come back through on the way back towards where I'm gonna take the, the boat out back up here at this little canal. And uh, this is where I found that caster mound a while ago. I have beat in my deep water or you know, my soft, big foot soft mud anchor. I'm taking a TS-85. Got it squished in there good. And I'm taking some of my Alpha Delta put up here on that mound that I, where I excavated all this dirt right here. And put it up on that mound and doped it up with my lure and watered it in i don't think there's over two beaver in here probably a pair of two-year-old just moving in but it's creating a problem for the landowner trying to pump his flooded timber locations because i mean this is a heck of a duck hole there's mallards and woodies and pintails and all kind of stuff flying around I'm going to run this uh, out into deep water anchor it off. If it's brown, it's down. So <laughs> whatever I find in here, he's wanting gone. Got to love it when you when it's this easy to put the canoe in the water for like damage control or anything. But you can just take the boat out of the back of the truck and slide it right into the water. That's one of the only reasons why I'm over here today. I have trouble walking, so this is this makes it easy for me that I don't have to yank and tug and pull and cuss. And so yeah, I'm gonna get over here and talk to the landowners and uh, tell them what I found. And it, if it's brown, it's down. If it comes through here tonight, it is caught. So <laughs> I'll let them know what I've put out and where. Over here at the duck property, and I was in here trapping for them. I had cooked um, boudin and uh, carrots, mushrooms, taters, yeah, baked potato. invited me to eat, so if it don't all blow away, thank you for that. Oh yeah. Pretty interesting setup they got. They got this PTO driven water pump, kind of back down in here to the river, running up here on a 10 inch that blue pipe pulling from the river going into the sloughs to flood their their flooded timber locations for their duck hunts but <laughs> that's interesting but uh, they're just uh, it's putting a lot of water back in the sloughs so we'll get out of here and see you tomorrow